Thank you. Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us is Sergey Nazarov, the co-founder of Chainlink, the industry standard Web3 services platform that provides global enterprises with a universal gateway to all blockchains. Chainlink has enabled trillions of dollars in transaction volume across DeFi, insurance, gaming, NFTs, and other major industries, and recently launched its much-anticipated Chainlink Staken. Sergey, it's great to see you as always. Welcome back to Trade Talks. And of course, congratulations on the launch. I also look forward to getting your thoughts on how the blockchain industry will evolve in 2023. But let's start with the basics. What is Chainlink's Economics 2.0? Sure. Thank, thanks for having me, Jill. So Chainlink's Economics 2.0 is uh, a new chapter in how the Chainlink uh, protocol and uh, ecosystem is going to scale to achieve a number of, uh, of important objectives. One of those is launching more Oracle networks, more services to create even more valuable smart contracts that come to redefine our industry the way DeFi did with the help of Chainlink Oracle networks. Another aspect of it is basically value capture and the ability for the economics of the system to incentivize the creation of more and higher and higher quality Oracle networks and basically more and more individual services that can be used to provide more and more advanced use cases to the to the general public through the combination of Oracle networks and smart contracts. And the third is the launch of various uh, exciting program programs like the Chainlink Build program, the Chainlink Scale program, and uh, Chainlink Staking. What are some of the big milestones for Chainlink this past year? So, so this year has been has been quite active based on the DeFi boom. Um, this year, there's been over 6.6 .6 trillion in transaction value enabled by Chainlink Oracle Networks, which uh, is an extremely large number for any industry, but is it is a very, very large number for the blockchain and smart contract industry. And that's because uh, Chainlink is live on uh, many different chains across many different protocols and many different use cases. So I, I would say that the transactional throughput that the network achieved this year at over 6.6 .6 trillion is, uh, is, is one very big milestone. The other big milestone is that there's there was over a thousand unique services launched during the 2020 uh, 2022 years. So there we we rose to this new height of over a thousand unique services in the form of Oracle networks, which basically means that there's more and more unique combinations people can do to create advanced use cases like DeFi, NFTs, gaming, insurance, and others. And then uh, the other milestone we achieved relatively recently by launching the Economics 2.0 plan with the launch of the Build program, the Scale program, and most recently the launch of Chainlink Staking. What are some of the large features that will be coming up for Chainlink? There, there, there's basically three key categories of what, what Chainlink does. One of them is around data, the other one is around computation, and the third one is around cross-chain communications. So in data, uh, the big advances I think are gonna be low latency data, which are gonna be extremely useful to all the various derivatives protocols that are coming um, into the blockchain industry and are getting more and more value as derivatives is a, is a huge industry that's that's ripe for disruption and change. And the blockchain industry is in a, is in a very good position to do that. The second category um, of data that I'm particularly excited about is identity data. And identity data will be quite useful for allowing people to prove um, their status in AML KYC terms to prove various things about themselves as users and will allow for things such as regulated DeFi to, to start slowly coming to life. The, the other category of things that I think is there's going to be a lot of progress on in, in my expectation is CCIP, the cross-chain interoperability protocol, which is uh, similar to uh, what TCP IP did for the internet. So it's, it's going to allow multiple blockchains to get interconnected and allow people to build applications across multiple blockchains at once and allow value and transactions and um, information to flow between chains. So I, I think on the data side and on the cross-chain side, there's going to be a lot of progress. There's also a lot of interesting developments on the automation and computational side, but those developments um, are, are happening more gradually. And it was busy for 2022. What is next for the blockchain industry and how do you think it's going to evolve for 2023? I, I think the blockchain industry is, is a place where 
people go to get exposed to new technology, as well as a place that solves very fundamental problems. And that's why it's kind of hard to predict which one of those will be more important. I think on the fundamental um, new technology front, DeFi will continue to take a center stage and be a great innovation of how the global financial system works. I think on the foundational solution side, uh, things like proof of reserves and the ability to prove solvency and the ability to prove counterparty risk is something that I think will extend far outside the crypto industry. And if there are any upcoming um, financial institution failures or financial institution trust issues, then the, the fundamental transparency and cryptographic truth properties of blockchains and oracles will become extremely valuable, not only in the blockchain industry, but also in the traditional financial industry. So I, I think what we're going to see is more and more innovative use cases in, in DeFi and in insurance and gaming. And th that's going to push the limit of what blockchains can do. But then there's a, a few very fundamental things that they do, namely around transparency and risk management. And I think those will start getting integrated more and more in the traditional financial system. And those integrations will get accelerated if there are any issues in the traditional financial system, which blockchains are uniquely able to solve. Encouraging to hear because this has to be built on trust. There really is no other way to do this. Sergey, appreciate the insight as always. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Thanks for having me, Jill. Good to see you.